This episode contains spoilers for Telltale's Game of Thrones and the HBO series it's based on. Hello and welcome back to the Push to Smart Water Cooler. This week we are talking about Game of Thrones Episode 3. It has a subtitle. (laughs) Yeah, I keep forgetting what it's called. The Sword in the Darkness. Oh. (laughs) Or that one. (laughs) (laughs) So last time we talked about Game of Thrones, we went over the first two episodes of the series. Now, after playing the third game, we're halfway through because it's a six-episode season. Mm -hmm. And we were pretty lukewarm after the first two episodes. So let's just jump right in and see if those thoughts have changed at all. <laughs> oh. It's so bad. God, where to begin? Okay, we start off with Asher, and he's running away from the mercenary dudes. Mm-hmm. And he's with Beska and Malcolm, and the first thing you think is, oh my god, I'm gonna have to choose between Beska and Malcolm. Yep. But it's okay, <laughs> because within five minutes, you're choosing between Beska and Malcolm. Uh, I don't know, I hate it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We're done. <laughs> no, I just hate Asher's section. I just I, don't give a shit. Yeah, the problem is I think Asher's section would have been good as its own game where it's given time to develop mm-hmm. and explore all these avenues. But it's just kind of, every time we get back, there's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, what, what, wait, what, what are we doing over here? What, what, what's going on? Who are these people? Asher is definitely the least fleshed out of the characters, uh, and it feels like... He's just kind of there to amp up the tension and give you some, you know, sword fighting, swashbuckling action. I don't even know if it's rev up the tension. It's just, I wonder if they're trying to break up, break up the tension with him because everything else is so grim, dark, ultra serious. Mm -hmm. And then he's a little bit more swashbuckling, you know, joking. Yeah. And so very early on, you get into a cave and you run into Drogon, which is Daenerys's most badass angry dragon with the black scales. Because of course you do, because this is fan fiction. Because, of course. <laughs> what else are you going to find in a cave? Hey, kids! One of the three dragons in the entire yeah. world. <laughs> uh, but, you know, that wasn't even my biggest beef with that game. Because the Asher sections, like I said, I felt like they would work in their own thing if they were given time to shine and be polished. My big issue is goddamn Tuttle. He has so much screen time. He has way too much screen time. And it feels like the fate of the Forrester family is going to be in his hands. It's like... Based uh, on what transpired this episode. Yeah. It's like, Jon Snow is already really boring. And then Mm. he is like, B-grade Jon Snow. Yeah. And then they did like, hey, you know what would be awesome? If we had Jon Snow, the most boring character, and B-grade Jon Snow, the most boring (laughs) character, and put them in a bunch of scenes together. Yeah. That would propel the action forward. So when you take hold of Tuttle, you are going on to the Tree of the Old Gods to give your... To swear your allegiance. (laughs) (laughs) To the wall. (laughs) And then you get back, and suddenly Duncan is there. What? And... Yeah, and he has some words for you. (laughs) Because not only was it bad enough that they sent you to the wall, but now they've sent you to the wall and immediately want you to betray the Night's Watch. And that whole conversation was so bizarre. Because, like, Mm -hmm. my first choice was, like, when he tells me all that's going down, I'm like, what can I do to help? And then my very next choice was, whoa, whoa, but I just took a vow. I can't betray them. And it was like a constantly <laughs> yo-yoing. And then they had that mm-hmm. map. That goddamn map. <laughs> Where you had to rotate your little signet but thing on it. It was like, I described it on Twitter. It's just such a Scooby-Doo moment. Like, every mm-hmm. other line was... We have to rotate the map. Yeah, oh, every other line was, what? Is this a key? What? Is this a map? <laughs> I'm hoping... That this means that there isn't going to be as much Jon Snow now, since he has a no. mission that's obviously not going to involve him. But who knows? Maybe Jon Snow's going to come along anyway, because this is Telltale Games' Game of Thrones. <laughs> and then the other big kind of reveal on the wall is the man who murdered your family is now a part of the Night's Watch as well. Which pays off very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Like, that was... I was like, oh, I wonder how this will play off. Oh. A little bit of whiplash there. But the thing that bugged me so much, and particularly in this episode, I felt like some of the TV show characters were 
mischaracterized. And Jon Snow is like, he's your brother now. You've got to totally be cool with this. We're brothers. It's a brotherhood, guys. Even though last episode he was like, if I see a Lannister, I would do shit to them. And I'd do it hard. And I'm just kind of like, I'm just so frustrated every time I have to switch over to Tuttle. It's just bad. And then, oh, okay, so what about the revelation that the thief guy, Cotter, is that his name? That he's a wildling? I actually kind of liked that, because I felt like I could trust him a bit more, since he's not really... Drunk the Kool-Aid yet. (laughs) (laughs) And so he's probably going to be cool if I go and try to find the the grove, Mm -hmm. the grove forest. He explicitly says he'd be cool that he'd go with you. And then, speaking of characters who aren't characterized very well, we go... To Mira mm-hmm. and Cersei let slip that you and Tyrion have been talking. Mm-hmm. And Marjorie is pissed. <laughs> and she's like, Don't you talk to Tyrion? I just need a handmaid, mm-hmm. so you're gonna be my handmaid. And then Tyrion comes up to you right before the wedding yeah. <laughs> and he's like, Hey guys, how's it going? Mira, let's talk. And I'm like, No, not gonna do it. Whatever. And so he just keeps asking me these questions and <laughs> And then I'm, like, brushing him off as well as I can, as much as a handmaid should brush off yeah. a Lannister lord, the lord of coin. Mm-hmm. And then Marjorie's like, I can't believe you'd even talk to him. I'm so pissed <laughs> off. You're not even going to let me, I'm not even going to let you put me in my wedding dress. Come, whatever you're Other other girl that looks exactly like Myrna. Because all the characters look so much alike in this game. That was another thing that really bothered me. It was like, everybody really started to look alike, except for there's a few characters with very distinct looks. But like, half of them are sandy blonde men with beards. (laughs) And I cannot keep them straight. Or long brown haired ladies. Yes, wearing the exact same dress, just with different colors. Yeah, the characterization of Marjorie really bugged mm-hmm. me because she's probably one of my favorite characters along with Cersei. Yeah. It was very plot, 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 move plot along. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was just very like, somebody needs to be upset at you for this, so it's going to be Marjorie, even though Cersei's standing right there yeah. and she could do so much more and it would actually fit her character. Mm-hmm. <sighs> <laughs> I did like that they didn't try, like, I wasn't sure how they do the purple wedding thing. Mm-hmm. I like that they had you just standing outside and then you'd see the birds go up and you knew what that meant. Yeah. And you saw the guys lifting the pie that were all suspicious like. Mm. I like the kind of periphery like, oh, hey, there's that thing. <laughs> and then you hear like the audio from the yeah. show of Cersei. And, you know, it was good. And I actually was, I was starting to really get into it when the guy approaches you and he's like, hey, you can stand toe to toe with a Lannister. And- yeah. Then you can totally... The other sandy blonde bearded guy. (laughs) Whatever his name (laughs) is. And I was, you know, starting to get really Mm -hmm. into it. And I was like, yes, I'm going to have Mira and she's going to be a badass. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, whoa, Tyrion and Cuffs, never mind. Yeah, that was wasted. That was really wasted. That would have been fun to play for a couple episodes. You have to get the decree off of Tyrion's desk. If you're tied to him, you're basically blacklisted. So she breaks in. And I actually thought that that was a really tense scene. Yeah. I actually really liked that part. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it was one of those moments where I was kind of yelling at the screen because I was so into it. I was like, go, go, open the thing. You have to go. You have to go now. Go. Make a distraction. Okay, we're good. And so, like... I just wish it was just Mira and Roderick. Mm-hmm. If, if, if that was yeah. the game, I would actually be enjoying yeah, it. Yeah, I think their segments are the strongest. I have a really weird affection for Tom, and I know he's going to die or betray me. Yeah, I really like the way that scene was done, but I wasn't sure when I finally got the, the document, I wasn't sure if my have it existing would tie me to Tyrion and make me, like, make me blacklisted, or if I had it, I could say, oh, no, I've, I've, I've had this since before. So my deal with Sandy Blonde Guy is still good. Mm. What did you do? I, I didn't burn it. I kept it. Tom was just like, what are you doing? Yeah, I was like, no. I've already kept my knife. Might as well keep going. <laughs> <laughs> just souvenir collection. <laughs> and then we get to Roderick, and it's a little bit similar because it has to do with the politics of the situation. But during that first scene with Roderick where the White Hills are trying to take over the hall, Mm -hmm. I was really frustrated. There was no right answer. Yeah, there's no right answer. There's no way you can make a damn difference. Mm -hmm. So every choice I made, I felt like I just kept being hit in the face. You know, there was that choice where it's like, stop them or let them go. And I hit stop them. And I was like, I know this isn't going to do Mm -hmm. anything, but I'm still going to be super pissed if it does. (laughs) 
and uh, they were like, oh, you can't do anything because you're a cripple. <laughs> Uh, I just wanted to throw my controller because yeah. I just didn't understand the point, and I don't like how we're halfway through the game now, and the majority of the playable characters have not had a win. Yeah. I wish it was more about subterfuge. Instead of having to choose either stand down or, or you know, be forward and then have the same results, I wish you could acknowledge, okay, I am physically weaker. I don't have the same resources, so I'll have to do this differently. I wish it was more of a play that way yeah not a you are weaker therefore you can't do anything (laughs) that shuts off all your other options yeah exactly because there's a lot of like we gotta wait for asher amir to come through but then you shouldn't be left just to kind of twiddle your thumbs in the meantime they should have other interesting things for you to do as roderick whilst still be able to being able to communicate the oppressive situation but there's also some choices that i didn't feel I I felt like the game was trying to poise as this is a difficult choice for you. This should be an emotional choice. And it wasn't. Choosing between saving Ryan Mm -hmm. or going up against Yeah, it's like it doesn't even Mm -hmm. make any sense for me to save Ryan. And then kind of the mother especially kind of yo-yos between enforcing the house and wanting to go abandon it to rescue Ryan depending on what is convenient for the writers at that moment. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, oh, we need someone in opposition. Let's do this. Yeah, I'm I'm very tired of the mother. I I also thought it was like such an easy decision and I mm-hmm. know that they were trying to build it up as this big hard one. Mm-hmm. But it's like I am the leader. Yeah, I'm abandoning hundreds of people if I do that. And like I really like that after I made the decision he's like what's the point of saving Ryan if he's not going to have a home to come back yeah. to? Yeah. It's like and boom. there it's not just my family, mm-hmm. it's all the people who help <laughs> and I mean, Yeah, this is a town kind of. Exactly. <laughs> That was my thinking, too. Who do you think the spy is? That was interesting, and I'm kind of hoping it's dynamic based on who you chose to be your sentinel. I'm wondering if Uh. it will be the sentinel or if it will be whoever you didn't choose to be the sentinel. Mm -hmm. But part of me also wonders if it's just the mom. I think it's the mom. (laughs) Going with, like, the um, Stark's parallel, how she kind of undermines him. Oh, yeah. Uh, Curses. (laughs) (laughs) And especially when you get back, she's like, what else did they tell you? I didn't tell her shit. (laughs) <laughs> no, neither did I. I was like, I'm just going to keep this hot card yeah. close to my chest. Mm. There was a part where you go to see good White Hill lady. Yeah. And she's like, just let Griff do whatever he wants and you'll be fine. You want peace, don't you? And I was like... That's not peace. When I was talking to her, I was like, yeah, I want peace. Mm. And then as soon as I see Griff, I'm like, fuck you, guy. <laughs> <laughs> see, I had the opposite reaction. I was like, I cannot promise that, you know? And then yeah. when he brought out the sister and he's like, well, one of you is going to be punished. I was like, okay, I'll- I'll have him stay down. Oh, you had him stay down? I did. Oh. I kind of regretted it because I wanted, because all the townspeople were there. Mm -hmm. So tell me what happened when that, because I thought that was one of the most compelling moments so far in the game. I don't know if it's going to be that different. Griff just beat you up. How how many times did you stand up and help? None. I just stayed down and he still hit me or still hit him because like he like, he's like, you should be down further. And, like, steps on his chest. But that's pretty much it. And then he talks to the people, saying, you know, like, this is how you should be. And then he leaves. But then you have a closing scene with the sister, where you get to kind of talk to her, talk her through how that could help us. Like, you know, they think they've won. Mm -hmm. But that just means they're going to be soft for when we strike back with our resources. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I like that a lot. That made me feel better. Mm -hmm. So I got up, and I kept getting up, Mm -hmm. and he kept knocking you down and punching the shit out of you. But what I liked was that the townspeople started looking at you with kind of pride in their eyes. And also, maybe I'm misreading it and maybe I'm getting the soldiers Mm -hmm. wrong, but it looked like the White Hill soldiers were looking at Griff in a negative light. Ooh, okay. Because he kept pushing me down. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when I talked to Forrester Lass... (laughs) Forrester Lass! (laughs) She was like, oh, you know, you inspired people. And I was like, okay, that's good. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. And I think that's kind of it for the episode. Well, there's Tuttle. There's a bit with Tuttle. Oh, fuck Tuttle. Britt, the man who killed your family, is just... Really upset that he's here because... He killed your family and got in trouble for it. Because he killed your family. (laughs) Why did you make me kill your family? So he starts this fight, and I I try not to fight back at first. Yeah. But then... It doesn't really give you a choice after that. It's just reacting. And then at the end, you have the chance to, like, run him through, Mm -hmm. walk away, or kick him off the wall. 
and every fiber of my being was like, kick him yeah. off the wall. It'll be so badass. But I walked away. So did I. And I kind of... <sighs> my thinking was, if I kicked him off the wall, we'd go out the next day to go on the search, and there'd just be this body, <laughs> like, as soon as the door opened. Just, something's blocking the door. <laughs> But it was like one of those things where I was like, if I kick him off the wall, will it be badass? Yes. <laughs> will they think it was intentional? Also, yes. Would Tuttle deserve that badass moment? No. Yeah, but then like Finn, I think is his name, comes and sees you and runs away. And yeah. he's just the worst. Like, <laughs> he's another They're like... all the worst. <laughs> but yeah, that being said, let's go into the choices. Okay. In the beginning, as Asher, did you go to Beska's rescue or Malcolm's? Beskus. Me too, because she's up against a fucking, a fucking dragon. dragon. <laughs> yeah, that was my thought. <laughs> it's like, Malcolm can take yeah. on two guys. Beska, maybe not a dragon. Yeah, it was 46.7% when I played. Okay. I avoided Tyrion when Me I too. was with Marjorie, and that was 48.3% when yeah, I played. Yeah, I was kind of, I was wondering what it was like if you went with him, if you were even able to go with him, if he would give you the piece of paper that was so important, but probably not. Mm-hmm. And then. We both walked away from Brit. Mm-hmm, 67.8% did when I played this morning. Oh, you're 0.3%? Yay, look at me. Yay. <laughs> and then I stood up to Griff Whitehill, but only 30.1% did when I played. Yeah, this morning 69.4% had submitted to Griff yeah. when I played, including myself. I, I, You know, I think part of it was just I could not fucking stand it anymore. Yeah. And it was part frustration with how, the game and how contrived it's become. Mm-hmm. And part frustration with the character Griff. So, yeah. You burned the Ironwood Decree. I kept it. And 69% kept it, which is surprising to me. Yeah. I was surprised, too. I burned the shit out of that. (laughs) I wonder how much of that is just wanting to see what happens next. Or just not understanding what it was. Like, I was like, well, maybe the other guy could be my business partner now. (laughs) That's a good point. You could use it as evidence that nobody knows that you're connected anymore. Mm -hmm. As opposed to... Just saying, no, I totally got it out there, and he'd have no idea. Ah, now I see. But yeah, so I'm just frustrated with mm-hmm. this. There are times when I want to, like, throw the controller against the wall, like I said. Yeah. But there are also times where I'm totally in it, like when I'm Mira, and I'm trying to clear my name so I can be a badass cutthroat businesswoman from the 80s with shoulder pads. <laughs> <laughs> So that does it for our discussion on Telltale Games Game of Thrones Episode 3. Last time, we asked which event from the book of the show would you want the game to weave into the most. A couple viewers wanted to see the Battle of the Wall that happens near the end of Season 4, and that included Bleeders and J. Louis. J. Louis in particular wanted to see Stannis at the Wall, which happens a little bit at the very end of the battle. Also, if you were Catherine Henderson, would like to see Littlefinger, which I think would be, now that Tyrion is gone, I feel like that'd be a very interesting dynamic to add in. Mm-hmm. Especially the way that the TV show is playing with Sansa and Littlefinger's dynamic. The Sansa we see that manufactures that story about Littlefinger and her aunt, like that would be a cool player to kind of introduce to this game. For me, I think what I would most be excited to see is Tyrion's trial and see if Mira would have (gasps) any interactions or if Cersei would try to get some sort of stuff to use against Tyrion from Mira in exchange for gold or help or whatnot. And that is a sentiment that 359 also agrees with, so we're buds now. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I, I like that idea a lot. Since we are now halfway through Telltale's Game of Thrones, we want to hear who your favorite playable character in the series is. Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with all of our latest episodes and water cooler discussion. That's a fucking Forrester. Maybe I deserve that.